My friends, we're now at the 500 year anniversary of the Protestant Reformation. And you need to be aware that the Vatican Jesuits are using this celebration as a vehicle to destroy Protestant Christianity. They're sending in false apostles to infiltrate churches and creating cult movements to subvert and manipulate Protestants into doctrines of demons. They're coming to steal, kill and destroy. And this should be very clear from the Jesuit oath that is taken that this is very intentional. This society is rooted in Freemasonry, with Pope Francis being the first ever Jesuit Pope. They're not Christians, they're Luciferians and Kabbalists. What we're seeing develop with the ecumenical movement is leading to the new age of Antichrist. Do not be deceived. I want to bring something very urgent to your attention. The ecumenical movement that is taking place worldwide is doing so, I believe, in the spirit of Antichrist. Now that sounds like a very big statement, but I'm going to hopefully prove this to be true. It is being done in the name of Christ. It's being headed up by the Roman Catholic Church. It is representative of the charismatic movement or the leaders of the charismatic movement coming into reunification with the Roman Catholic Church. And they claim that when the world sees this reunification, that then suddenly the whole world will believe in Christ as a result of this. And that this is allegedly to prepare the way for the Lord's return. This is actually unbiblical. But you see, once that main separating spirit of division was pulled down. It released the Lord Jesus to get this thing underway. The keynote speakers are Cardinal Daniel Donato and Kenneth Copeland. Kenneth Copeland is one of the usual suspects in terms of the charismatic movement. His doctrines are so heretical that they can't even be described as Christian. There's no question that Copeland has links to Freemasonry and mysticism and every kind of uh, perversion of biblical Christianity that you can possibly dream up. The biggest church split in history, the Catholic Church. We've been protesting for 500 years, baby. There is also an association with the new apostolic reformation it represents gnosticism which was the same problem or the same demonic influence that attacked the christian gospel in the new testament and gnosticism fundamentally is mysticism it deals with subjective spiritual experience which is elevated above the word of god or biblical doctrine so this is to get all the religions together right Mary's message of peace, unity, and tolerance is one that a distressed and perplexed world craves. The Queen proclaims that there will come a time when all Christendom will be reunified under the Roman Church. Is the papacy doing that at the moment? The biggest church split in history. The Catholic Church split. Satan is the spirit of division. Now, when you're dealing with what happened 500 years ago, what is a protest? Strife. Oh, one of my favorite days in my life was with Pope Francis. What a man, he's one of my heroes. And this is what he's all about, this whole thing. That's one of the things that got me so on fire about it. And I am on fire. I just heard, I heard the Lord say this uh, just two days ago. 2018 is the year of the Holy Ghost and fire. 
the Big 18. Say it together. Say Catholic, Lutheran. If there is no more protest, how can there be a Protestant church? What it is essentially, remember with the Knights Templar, this is dominionism. This is dominion theology about taking over the world. Coming into reunification with the Roman Catholic Church. And they claim that when the world sees this reunification, that then suddenly the whole world will believe in Christ. Now these seven fields of influence are very powerful, so powerful in fact, that he who occupies the top of those mountains can literally shape the agenda that, that forms nations. Can literally shape the agenda that forms nations. Where in the Bible does the Bible teach that the governments of the world will be controlled and ruled by born-again believers? If you can show me one scripture, where in scripture does it say that the church will gain such influence that we will rule the world? My Bible says that when Jesus Christ comes, He, not His church, He, the King of glory, he will set up a kingdom. The Knights Templars are at the heart of this conspiracy to rule the world, otherwise known today as the New World Order. The Jesuits really are the revived Knights Templars, these counterfeit crusades that they hold. So beware of these dangerous doctrines of demons that are coming into the church. It's prophetic that God's using you to break things open. In Jesus' name, we declare the spirit of religion that blocks the glory, be, the head be cut off. Decapitate. That he who occupies the top of those mountains can literally shape the agenda that, that forms nations. This crusade, crusade, this war on terrorism. The Knights Templars. In Jerusalem, the Templars began to deviate further and further away from the practices of Christianity. They learnt the secret arts of the Kabbalah, an ancient form of Jewish magic, along with its dark rites and rituals. In 1717, the Templars made their reappearance in Europe. They had grown in both number and strength, and were now ready to coin a new identity, free from their reputation of the past, and given credibility by none other than the monarchy and aristocracy of England. And the name they chose for themselves was a name that will be known by many, but understood by a few. This new name, the Freemasonry. Now, at its very core, this issue seems to tie right into the Knights Templar. And I know that sounds very strange from the get-go, but honestly, this, this deception that's coming into the church is actually tied to the Jesuit Knights Templar, the government of the Order of the Temple of Solomon. I mean, not only are we in the time where everyone's saying, you know, is there going to be a third temple? And then in 2013, it comes to light here that the Knights Templar are back, um, you know, for, not that they ever went away, but they've come back into the public light, the Sovereign Magistral Order of the Temple of Solomon. 2013 AD, it's fully restored as an independent sovereign subject of international law in 2013, embodying the authentic Templar heritage. And we literally have a whole website here which is dedicated to all of these official documents, legal documents, mind you, and the missions. This is what I want to show you, this Templar spirituality. And this is how this links with this deception that we're seeing, the worship of the goddess, the reverence of the divine feminine, Gaia. 
The temple rule proves that the Knights Templar were always dedicated to honouring the divine feminine principle as the spiritual feminine aspect of God. So you can see how this ties to the Roman Catholic Church, to the Jesuits, to Allah, the Moon Goddess, and to all of these false religions, but also this pagan New Age, which is actually the Old Age Babylon agenda. Um, and the throwing out of this masculine, we you know we see all these attacks on God and, and um, the Old Testament and the truth of God and, and turning into this airy fairy emotional experiential deal without boundaries without restrictions without commands and all of this stuff is tying into when you come to its very core the conspiracy at its very heart of the new world order the antichrist the paganism the the babylon agenda new world order is actually rooted in the knights templar who never went away but now in 2013 have officially come out into the public and declared themselves sovereign uh, a sovereign entity without territory but sovereign nonetheless so it's all about gnosticism and christian mysticism the divine feminine the uniquely ancient and diverse heritage of Templar spirituality was fully disclosed to the Vatican and officially endorsed by the Roman Catholic Church. Authentic Templar spirituality is a form of esoteric Gnosticism which is wholly compatible with the canonical Christian mysticism of classical Catholicism. Gnostic spirituality primarily concentrates on personal divine communion through the Holy Spirit here we go, look, Templar Chivalry, look at this. This is the picture of the Pope with all the, the world leaders of religions, of false religions. Hinduism, Islam, Baha'i. And this is what they are showing. And at the bottom of the page we can see all of these emblems which say a lot. Pontifical protection. Recognized by five Vatican papal bulls as Templar guardians of the church. Cooperation with Islam. Look at that. Cooperation with Islam as a tool of the Jesuit Knights Templar. Look at this. The Knights of Saladin under Templar sovereign patronage. Diplomatic relations with the United Nations with the Crest of Rome. Oh my goodness me. Look at this, United Nations. This is where all of these agendas are coming to. So, and remember with the United Nations that they have those books on New Age spirituality, Alice Bailey, and all of these people who were involved in this Gnostic counterfeit um, spirituality of the Antichrist and this is very similar this logo is very similar to what we see on some of the big Christian so-called Christian broadcasting networks at the very top but with this fire and water so we see on a lot of these um, these big organizational level a lot of Illuminati symbolism and what it is essentially remember with the Knights Templar this is dominionism this is dominion theology about taking over the world so this explains the influx of false doctrine of Jesuit infiltrators into churches into the mainstream Christian um, media and all with this core belief of the Holy Grail uh, the divine feminine Gnosticism that they are really pushing onto churches and losing those boundaries that they're advertising it as something like in in Hollywood you know we need to get out of this box and we need to you know forget all the old stuff we need to 
free ourselves, liberate ourselves, liberals, liberation from the old into this new, this new spirituality, which is a lot more humanistic and it's a lot more divine and, and you feel more, you experience more. And that's the cheese on the trap that they're trying to pull people in. Um, I mean, yes, there are certain good things to um, reformation, but they are they are staging a counterfeit reformation, which is a Knights Templar Gnostic reformation, and they're pulling people into these horrific scenes, which I showed at the beginning of this with Bethel music and all of these people that have counterfeit, um, counterfeit revivals, counterfeit prophecies, counterfeit signs and wonders. These groups that are actually pushing a Kundalini spirit. These, these, you know, these counterfeit crusades that they hold at the, you know, these these top levels, which are coaxing and coercing people into a counterfeit spirit, uh, 